We're making good progress, but now it's time to throw some pages around the screen. If we want to eliminate the refresh cycle, we'll need to load everything from one page. So we'll need to restructure our index.html slightly. We'll create a container div, which we'll call pages, and in it we'll have a number of children divs, which will become our pages. We'll drop some text in there for the moment, just so we can see some stuff happening. Next, let's set the hrefs of the buttons in the tab bar. We'll use hashes that match the IDs of the pages. That is how we'll work out which page we want to show next. Obviously, we don't want all of the pages to be visible at the same time, so we need to apply some styles to hide all but one page. By only targeting direct descendants of the pages div by using a greater than symbol, we won't accidentally hide any divs that are inside our pages. We'll also create a class called current, which will allow us to show one page from the stack. By binding to the click events on the tab bar, we can hide and show pages simply by changing the class name. As we click around the tabs, you can see the pages change. Excellent, although you might notice that the icons aren't changing color. Let's sort that out while we're here. We just need to change the class on the nav element. To get the set class name, we take the value of the links href and remove the first six characters using the slice method. Remember, each page starts with a hash page dash. Showing and hiding pages is all well and good, but we want animation, damn it! To do that, we need to set up some CSS first. Let's set the pages container to position relative and set all the children pages to position absolute. Next, set the top and left values to zero, so all of the pages sit on top of one another. Right, now we get to the interesting bit, custom WebKit animations. Mobile devices do have relatively decent video cards, if you can call them that, but they are very selective about what they will accelerate. If we do all of our animation using jQuery, the devices won't accelerate those effects, making them very choppy, especially if there are a lot of images and gradients and stuff. Back in the day, pre-App Store days, Apple envisaged people making web apps like we were making, so they built in some harder accelerated CSS animations for us for this very reason. When you add a class to an element, the animation fires. Let's add two classes, .in and .out and we'll use those to animate pages transitioning in and transitioning out. In this selected definition, we set up the ease in out timing function, which means the animation starts slow, speeds up and slows down again. A bit like going up and down on a roller coaster. We also set the duration for each animation to 300 milliseconds. Next, we need to define the keyframes. Keyframes are interesting parts of the animation, generally when something starts, ends or changes direction. This animation has two keyframes, the start, which has an opacity of zero, and the end, which sets the opacity to one. The browser interpolates the values between and gives us a nice smooth fade effect. If we add another keyframe, we can make the element fade in and then fade out again. We've called this animation fade in out. We can name our animations and we need to so that we're able to reference them when we call them from another class. Let's modify our click handler to handle the animation. All we need to do is add the fade and in class to the page we're transitioning to and the fade out classes to the page we're transitioning from. So that gives us a nice fade in fade out effect, but you can still see the page below. That's because we now have two pages with the class name current. What we need to do is remove the current class from the old page after the transition has finished. Luckily, there is a new event that we can call called WebKit Animation End, which gets fired when an animation has finished. So now the animation effect is working quite nicely, but the code is pretty gross. It's all rather centered around fading pages. It's not very generic at all. It would also be quite painful to add other events. So let's abstract. This is all very nice on WebKit browsers, but there's a slight problem on other browsers. 
We rely on WebKit Animation End to Fire to clean up our page transition. Without it, the old page will still be visible. We need to add a test to see if the event exists and if it doesn't, do something else. Now we get lovely animations in WebKit and a still functional page swap in other browsers. After a little overzealous clicking, you'll notice that you can get the pages to a state where none of them are visible. If you click on the same tab twice or on another tab before the animation finishes, the current class becomes inconsistent. So let's put in a guard to stop that. All right, so we have our animations working. Let's move on to another one. The most recognizable of all is sliding between a mast and details page. As mentioned before, some CSS rules are hardware accelerated. In this instance, it isn't the obvious one. We need to use a CSS selector called Translate X, which is just a fancy way to transform an element, in this case, right to left. To animate a page exiting the screen to the left, we start at x equals zero, then move to negative 100%. To slide a screen in from the right, we start at 100% and move to zero. So let's define a new set of keyframes and their corresponding classes. First, out to left, and then in from right. And we'll create two new classes, push.out and push.in. Next, we should add a parameter to the transition function that tells it what animation to use. Simply replace all the instances of fade to type. And now set the current tab transitions to push for the moment so we can test it all out. All good. Just don't forget to set them back to fade when you're finished. Let's wire up another event that checks for a click on an LI in the spots list and stars list and then pushes the relevant details page. We'll drop in the list items from lesson one so we actually have something to click. That's all well and good, we can move forward, but we'll still need to move back up the stack too. Let's add a header to our child page and put a back button in there. There's quite a bit of CSS to style this, but it's all pretty straightforward and you should have seen this all before. If you want any help with what's going on, ask away in the Q&A. At this point, we need to add another class, reverse, which will reverse the animation. And we need to include the corresponding reverse keyframes. Let's add a third parameter to the transition method, which when true, will add the reverse class as well. And finally, let's bind to that back button. Easy as pie. Now we can move forward and back between pages using snazzy animations.